Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So uh, welcome back to the immunology lectures and we will be continuing our discussion on uh, the B cell maturation. So in the last class uh, or in the last lecture uh, we started with the B cell maturation and we had uh, talked about how the B cell undergoes uh, different stages of development starting from the multipotent uh, progenitor cells and then it develops into the progenitor B cell and then to the pre B cell and then finally it develops into an immature B cell and then finally the mature B cell. So uh, this whole development process as I already told in the last lecture as well that this whole development process uh, has a certain significant or important signaling molecules which are essential for the occurrence of the uh, gene rearrangement of the VDJ uh, gene rearrangement, the heavy chain locus. So it, it the rearranges the heavy chain locus and then it rearranges uh, the light chains and then finally it comes up with the expression of the IgM along with the fully matured IgM with the heavy and the light chains along with the Ig alpha and the Ig uh, beta subunits and these subunits are essential for signaling. So these are the signaling uh, subunits. So uh, what we have uh, if we go back into our last lecture quickly and if you see what we where we left in the last lecture is that these, these uh, MPP or the multipotent progenitor cells they first develop into this lymphoid progenitor cells and as I told this after this stage it becomes committed to become a B cell. So basically the, re, the rearrangement of the VDJ it starts occurring immediately after this stage and from the pro B cell to the pre B cell it is the heavy chain uh, mostly the heavy chain rearrangement and at the end of the pro B cells when, when it is a uh, pro B cell at the end before it becomes a pre B cell the heavy chains are rearranged. So you have already uh, gone through the lectures uh, where Professor Ghosh has uh, uh, introduced you to the VDJ recombination process, the RAG proteins and everything. Mm, so I will not go into the details of those uh, processes in these lectures. The only thing I will keep talking about the uh, VDJ recombination or the uh, VDJ rearrangements uh, 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 with an understanding that you know the processes already. So um, this uh, the VDJ recombination or the re rearrangement starts with after the lymphoid progenitor cell becomes committed to become a pro B cell or a progenitor B cell and from this progenitor B cell, so this progenitor B cell again has an early phase and a late phase, a early uh, progenitor B cell and a late progenitor B cell and that is where the entire process of the heavy chain uh, rearrangement starts occurring and then it occur and then it finishes the heavy chain rearrangement and when it is uh, when, when the uh, from the in the late progenitor B cell stage that is in the late pro B cell stage this 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 pro B cells there is an early and a late phase. So there is an early and a late phase. So in the early phase in the beginning it starts with the VDJ recombination or the rearrangement and at the late stage this rearrangement of the heavy chains is complete and it starts the rearrangement of the light chains and then there is a certain intermediate um, uh, IgA molecules produced which are expressed on the surface. So the mu chain the mu heavy chains are being produced and are uh, expressed on the surface and along with that there are some intermediate peptides which forms the light chain and finally 
it develops into a complete IgM after there is the like chain rearrangement also occurring. And then it becomes a fully matured B cell with a um, complete antibody receptor. So, this whole process um, occurs at the genetic level and this process is actually uh, mediated by several transcription factors and which are basically uh, the downstream of these signaling processes. So, there are several transcription factors which are involved in this uh, whole process up, uh, and upregulation uh, of certain genes and certain gene products. And uh, we will see, we will uh, very uh, briefly see an overview how these cells they undergo this uh, what are the stages of this re gene rearrangement process and finally, what are the stages of selection. So, I also told that after an immature B cell is formed, it has to undergo a selection that means, it has to undergo a quality check, it has to undergo a quality control check whether it can interact with the self antigens or not if it can interact with the self antigen, it will be rejected and it will die, die out of apoptosis. Either it will die or it will remain as an unresponsive cell. So, it will not respond to any antibodies. So, there are, there are many ways the B cells they can uh, circulate or they can remain, we will discuss uh, more. So, let us see what, what exactly happens uh, in, this, uh, in this case. So, as we have uh, seen from starting from the stem cells, if we start from the stem cells again, where we, so from the stem cells, we have the pro B cells and as I told the pro B cells, the pro B cells, the pro B cells can be of an early pro B cell we call it the early in the late pro B cell. So, it can either it, it first develops into an early and then it develops into a late pro B cell. So, what happens in this early uh, pro B cell is initially there is a defragment to the J heavy chain rearrangement. So, this D to J rearrangement starts to occur here in this early stage. The first the gene rearrangement in the VDJ re, uh, rearrangement process. So, these cells in the early stage they start with the D to J rearrangement and then once this D to J rearrangement has taken place there is a V to D J H rearrangement. So, this is also a heavy chain rearrangement and the first is a D to J rearrangement and then a V to D J rearrangement. So, now this rearrangement starts to occur in the pro B cells and once this rearrangement is complete, then we call these cells the V D J rearranged cells. So, now they have completed the V D J rearrangement or the recombination process and these are the pre B cells. So, now this is the pre B cells and these pre B cells they have already they start to express the um, IgM or the surface IgM also sometimes called the um, uh, membrane IgM or the surface IgM the S IgM they start to express on the surface although the light chain rearrangement has not started occurring in this stage. So, the light chain rearrangement starts occurring at the pre B cell stage and uh, initially what happens is there is a surrogate light chain. So, you have you get a surrogate light chain 
and this surrogate light chain basically comprises of two small polypeptides which is one is the V pre B and is the lambda 5. So, these two small polypeptides they together comprises of this surrogate uh, light chain which is not really the complete rearranged light chain. It's a, so, it forms an intermediate receptor along with the signaling subunits. So, a receptor on the surface of the B chain typically looks like something like this. So, you have the surrogate light chains and you have the Ig alpha and the Ig beta subunits. So, at this stage, so the Ig alpha, Ig beta subunits they also st start to be expressed in this stage at the stage of the pro B cells in this Ig alpha, Ig beta. Sorry the Ig alpha and the Ig beta they are expressed along with this uh, rearranged heavy chains and they are also up they are also a part of the B cell receptors. So, they are the signaling subunits and they are the signaling subunits having a transmembrane domain and uh, like other uh, uh, cell surface receptors. So, they have a, a cytoplasmic tail from where the signals are being transduced. And this Ig alpha Ig beta uh, subunits of the receptor are particularly important because they send the signal for stopping or halting the heavy chain rearrangement. So, now from the pro B cell after the VDJ recombination of the VDJ gene rearrangement is completed in the early and the late phase of the pro B cell, it becomes a pre B cell. Now, this pre B cell has a completely rearranged heavy chain loci. The heavy chain locus has been rearranged. Now, the light chain rearrangement starts and the light chain rearrangement is completed when it reaches the next stage that is an immature B cell. Now, this immature B cell will have on its surface a completely Mm, uh, rearranged light chain. So, it has the uh, it will express on the surface IgM uh, with the kappa or the uh, lambda chains and it will also contain the Ig alpha and the Ig beta. So, this is the immature B cells. The immature B cells will have the complete IgM molecule on the surface. Now, this will finally, when it becomes a mature B cell, this will finally start to have the IgM as well as the it should as well as have the IgD immunoglobulin D. So, it has the IgM and the IgD expressed on the surface and this is the mature B cells. So, let us look into the whole uh, the entire stages of the B cell maturation and uh, for starting from the stem cells, it develops into a pro B cell, a progenitor B cell and first the early progenitor B cell which uh, where uh, the D to J H uh, rearrangement D to J rearrangement starts and then in the late phase the V to D J rearrangement starts and the Ig alpha and the Ig beta they starts to express on the surface. And now after the late uh, pro B cell then the uh, surrogate light chains they starts to express and then they form this intermediate uh, immunoglobulin molecule containing the rearranged heavy chains and the surrogate light chains. And this surrogate light chains are primarily comprised of two polypeptides the V pre, uh, pre B 
and the lambda 5. Now, now it starts to uh, rearrange the light chains and once the light chains are rearranged then it produces the immature B cells. Now, this immature B cells will finally develop into the mature B cells. Now, the question is what exactly helps in development of this immature B cells. So, the first thing is that uh, this after the cells this pre B cells they have completed this VDJ rearrangement or this VDJ recombination then you have this uh, Ig alpha and the Ig beta which are required for the signaling. So, as I told that uh, they have the signaling they are the signaling subunits of the B cell receptor. So, they have a, um, uh, uh, a cytoplasmic uh, part a cytoplasmic tail by which they transduce the signal and they are essential for halting or stopping the heavy chain uh, rearrangement and then the light chain rearrangement occurs. So, finally, this immature B cells are being produced. Now, these immature B cells, what is the fate of this Im of this immature B cells? So, what is the fate of this immature B cell? So, let us see N one immature B cell as I told on its surface will start to express the IgM. Now, if this immature B cell the IgM of this immature B cell now will be tested for its ability to react with self antigens. So, now if there is a cell nearby, so and you have the antigens. So, basically the cell surface molecules. So, now if if they can interact with the cell surface, uh, cell surface molecules, if they cannot interact that means, there is no reaction, no reactivity that means, they are unreactive, they do not react, then they will continue to mature and they will form the mature B cells. With the IgM as well as the IgD being expressed on the surface, but so this is for example, this is uh, the first case. A second case is like this where these B cells with the IgM molecules on their surface can actually interact with a cell surface antigen or a self antigen and that can lead to cross linking of the receptors. So, it can interact with or it can recognize the uh, a multivalent ligand or a cell surface um, uh, cell surface self molecules then this interaction can have two fates. What so either either the cells can die by apoptosis or they can undergo a second round of receptor editing. they can undergo a second round of receptor editing and they can have different light chains. So, now they can have uh, uh, their receptor specificities will change. So, that they have more uh, light chain rearrangements and their receptor specificities will change and then they can uh, then they might become non reactive to the self antigens and then if they are non reactive to the self antigens then they will finally, mature into a mature B cell. this is the second case. A third case 
is when there is an immature B cell expressing IgM on the surface and they can interact with some soluble antigens, not the cell surface antigens, some soluble proteins or some soluble peptides, some soluble antigens, but self antigens that can lead to receptor cross linking. So, if there is receptor cross linking, that means there, there is a higher high affinity for this self antigen. So, the affinity is high. So, it binds to that antigen, the soluble antigen with quite high affinity. Then what happens? Then basically, there, uh, this, these cells, they become unresponsive to the antigens. They become unresponsive. they are rendered unresponsive to antigens. Also, they are sometimes they are called the energic cells, energic B cells and they hardly respond to any uh, ligand or any antigen and they cannot be activated by any antigen or any ligand. So, they will be uh, kind of um, un remain unresponsive to the antigens and they will not. Uh, so, once they go to the peripheral system, they will not basically respond to the antigens and they become the energic cells. So, and then uh, they, they cannot be activated and differentiated. So, this is a third class and a fourth situation or a fourth case would be that a B cell which expresses the B cell receptor it can still bind to a soluble antigen similar to case 3. It can still bind to a soluble antigen, but not with a very high affinity. So, in this case we have seen at least in this case we have seen it binds with uh, it with a very high affinity, but in this case it does not bind to it with a very high affinity. So, the affinity is low or with a low affinity with the self ant antigen. It, it, so, there is no receptor cross linking and if that happens it will keep maturing normally. The cells will not be destroyed like what we have seen in case of uh, the other cells, uh, those which can interact with high affinity. This cell since they do not interact uh, with the ant ant antigens uh, with very high affinity, they will uh, still keep maturing. So, they will become uh, mature B cells of course, but the they will become kind of clonally ignorant population. So, they cannot actually be uh, because they have very low affinity for this uh, um, uh, self antigens, they can mature, but since they still have the ability to bind to the soluble antigens, they will re remain as clonally ignorant and these uh, they, they will uh, not be able to bind to ligands that can activate them because they can still bind to the self uh, antigens if that is present in very, very, very high uh, uh, concentrations. So, if that soluble antigen is present in a very high concentration, it can still may be uh, able to bind to it or active get activated, but normally they remain as clonally ignorant and they are not, uh, they do not interact with the ligand. So, uh, so they, uh, there are at least four different situations we can come across uh, during the selection or the quality control check of these um, B cells, uh, the immature B cells. So, the first case is that they do not react, they, they are unreactive, they do not react with any anti self antigens. So, then they will uh, normally mature and they will 
interact and finally, they will uh, move out of the bone marrow and then they will go to the periphery and then they will interact with the foreign antigens and will get uh, activated and they will differentiate and produce the antibodies. A second case is where they can uh, interact with the cell uh, surface antigens or the self antigens and multivalent uh, ligands which can lead to receptor cross linking. That means, they have very high affinity for these ligands. In that case, those B cells can have two fates, those immature B cells can have two fates. Either they can die because of apoptosis or programmed cell death or they can have a second round of uh, uh, receptor, uh, a second round of um, uh, 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 cross link, in the, a second round of the rearrangement of the receptors. So, that would then lead to the development of the mature B cells. So, overall what we see that uh, at least uh, the, uh, there are four different situations that can arise when a B cell, an immature B cell uh, develops into a mature B cell and then it leaves out of the bone marrow. So, the first uh, uh, in, the, in the quality control uh, check, the first situation is that it does not interact. So, there is no interaction with any cell surface uh, antigens and the, the, the B cell will mature normally. A second situation is that it interacts very avidly or uh, very tightly with a cell a surface self antigen and that can lead to two different situations. One, they can die by apoptosis or programmed cell death. In a second case, they can still undergo re-editing of the receptors. So, there is another round of re-editing of the receptors and uh, there is another round of uh, light chain rearrangement that would lead to the uh, development of the B cells. A third case is that the B cells, the immature B cells, the receptors can bind to some soluble antigens like some soluble proteins or some soluble peptides that can lead to cross linking of the receptors. Remember the situation 3 and the situation 4 are a bit different. So, in, in case of situation 3, the binding of the soluble antigen to the B cell receptor is strong and that can lead to cross linking of the receptors and if that happens, then that can lead to unresponsiveness and lead to the energic B cells. And in case of situation 4, if these antigens are, so the B cell receptors can still react with a soluble antigen, but the interaction is not that strong. So, it is a low affinity interaction. So, in, in case number 3, it is a high affinity interaction, in case number 4, it is a low affinity interaction and in that case, these the, the cells will, they will mature normally, they will undergo maturation. So, they will mature normally and, and uh, but they will remain clonally ignorant because they uh, might not have the ability to uh, interact with the ligands. So, and but still they will remain in the population and they will remain in the population and uh, their receptors since they have very, 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 very low affinity for these antigens. So, they can be activated at very high concentration of the ligands, very high concentration of these antigens. So, they will remain as clonally um, ignorant population because they are unable to bind or no ligand can actually activate them binding of any ligand can actually activate them. So, what happens uh, in the um, uh, case number 2 is that when there is a binding in uh, binding of so the most important cases are at least case number 1 and case number 2. So, uh, first one where there is a mature uh, B cell formation without any uh, reactiveness and the second case where there is our reactiveness that is if uh, there is a strong reaction to the cell surface antigens, self antigens remember. So, they interact with the cell surface self antigens and if that occurs, so if that occurs that it interacts with the cell surface antigens, 
the B cell receptor. If it can interact with the cell surface antigens. So, now there can be a second round of light chain rearrangement. And the B cell development will be arrested. So, here there will be an arrest of the B cell development and then you can have a second round of receptor editing leading to the light chain rearrangement and you will expression you will have expression of new set of light chains and then it will be again checked it will be again checked for the uh, with the new receptor specificity with this new receptor specificity so the receptor specificity the receptor specificity will change and with this new receptor specificity it will be again checked so these cells will again undergo a quality control check and even then if still there is a self reactivity then these cells will die by apoptosis and if they do not have this reactivity then they will continue to mature with the new light chains on the IgM. So, they will then develop into the mature B cells or they will they will mature and leave the bone marrow. So, this is the situation from this case number 2. So, these are the four different uh, situations that can arise with the B cells uh, 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 an immature B cell. So, what we learnt in today's uh, lecture in overall is uh, that how these uh, stem cells they uh, after entering into the early uh, pro progenitor B cells into the stage of early progenitor B cells um, there is a DJ recombination. Uh, rearrangement and then VDJ re rearrangement occurs and then you have the surrogate light chains uh, being expressed which then starts to express on the surface of the pre B cells and then finally, uh, you have the immature B cells where uh, you uh, um, uh, in this pre B cell stage you will start having the um, light chain rearrangement and then you will have the uh, complete IgM molecule be being formed and these IgM molecules. So, at this uh, pre, pre B cell stage there is again another stage where this, this, this cells becomes bigger in size and then they become again smaller in size uh, with the um, uh, IgM uh, in the soluble form and then the IgM is expressed on the surface of the molecule uh, of, the, of the cell and they are also called the membrane IgM or the surface IgM and this surface IgM will uh, associate with this Ig alpha and Ig beta the signaling subunits of the receptor and then finally, it will mature into the mature B cells. Now, at this stage when uh, the immature B cells before it finally, matures and leaves the bone marrow these immature B cells they can again interact with the cell surface antigens uh, and undergo four different uh, uh, fates. So, they have four different uh, situations can arise one is that they can interact with the surface antigens the different surface proteins like for example, the MHC molecules and uh, if it recognizes it as an antigen and it interacts it reacts. So, that means, it has a self reactivity then uh, th then it will not uh, go into the maturation stage it will either undergo apoptosis or it will uh, undergo a second round of re-editing of the uh, of the uh, B cell receptors. 
uh, that is case 2. Case 1 is that it does not interact with any uh, cell surface self anti antigens and that can lead to complete maturation of the B cells and development of the IgM and the IgD and the mature B cells will be produced. A case 3 is um, where they develop an energic B cell, energic B cell uh, means which is unresponsive to any antigen and that occurs when the B cell receptors are uh, they still interact with uh, self antigens but soluble antigens. And a case 4 is that when it still interacts with the soluble antigens, but with low affinity. So, there is they develop into a clonally ignorant population of the B cells. So, we kind of uh, try to understand if you look into the whole picture, uh, we try to understand uh, the B cell maturation, uh, the different stages of B cell maturation and selection of uh, the correct B cells which actually finally matures and the, uh, then it can uh, go to the, uh, lymph, uh, the lymphoid organs for uh, activation and differentiation. So, we will keep continuing, uh, we will keep continue discussing about the uh, B cell uh, development, activation and the differentiation uh, parts of the B cell, uh, what, uh, what occurs uh, with what happens to this mature B cells then. Uh, we will keep discussing about this and uh, uh, for today's lecture uh, we stop here and thank you very much.